Hi guys, this this evening here we're gonna go through this article by Muretal. The title is Serum Critical Level in Predicting Development of Hypertension. This study has been published in 1994. And here uh, in the end of the author they say it appeared that the serum critical level might be useful in predicting future hypertension. It appeared that the serum creatinine level might be useful in predicting future hypertension. It seems that the creatinine level can be utilized to predict the incidence of future hypertension. They performed a study, a 10-year follow-up study, longitudinal study on normal intensive Japanese adults. 229 individuals, 91 men, 138 women, have been uh, tested the blood pressure for 10 years. By hypertension, uh, hypertension was defined any uh, value of systolic blood pressure greater than 140 millimeter per mercury and diastolic blood pressure greater than 90 millimeter per mercury. This is a table that uh, kind of summarize all the characteristics of the participants and the individuals gathered for the study. In the results, I have underlined the following chunks of text. Serum creatinine was selected as one of the five predictors. An older age at the entering, increased systolic and diastolic, diastolic blood pressure, and increased body mass index heightened the risk of the developing hypertension, while increased serum creatinine level lowered it. The relative risk of hypertension decreased as the fertile of serum creatinine rose. The adjusted 10 years incidence of hypertension was 29.6% in subjects with a serum creatinine level of 1.2 mg per deciliter or higher at a baseline and 56.8% in those with a baseline level less than 1.1 mg per deciliter. So the incidence of hypertension in the 10 years uh, follow-up measure was higher. So the incidence of developing hypertension was higher in the group with a lower level of creatinine. The present study demonstrated that the serum creatinine level of normal tensive adults can hide in, prevention, uh, in predicting the future development of hypertension. Normal tensive subjects with serum creatinine levels were relatively lower, showed a higher risk of developing hypertension during the subsequent 10 years. Normal tensive subjects with serum creatinine levels were relatively lower showed a higher risk of developing hypertension during the subsequent 10 years. Lower level of creatinine, higher, higher incidence of hypertension. These are the main uh, factors or cause of hypertension. So high alcohol consumption, low calcium intake, high level of serum uh, triglycerides, level, low level of serum high density lipoprotein cholesterol, so low level of um, HDL, and high level of serum insulin. Here in this figure you see the incidence of hypertension during 10 years, uh, follow-up period 10 years, and is definitely lower in the group with, that has as a baseline 1.2 milligram uh, per deciliter of blood. So Again, once again, underlying that, the higher level of serum creatinine, the lower incidence of developing hypertension. Considering that the physical exercise was reported to reduce blood pressure level in some intervention study, and this is one of the uh, main known, well-known uh, results or effect of physical activity, chronic effect, of physical activity, so reduce blood pressure, this increase and improve the efficiency of the cardiovascular system, our results could be inter interpreted as saying that more muscular, actively exercising people with higher serum creatinine 
may have lesser likelihood of developing hypertension. So, more muscular, actively exercising people with higher serum creatinine, higher serum creatinine might have a lesser likelihood of developing hypertension. From here, they finish wrap everything up with the present study indicates the serum creatinine level, which can be easily examined at pre periodic health checks, might be useful in selecting those at higher risk of hypertension. Serum creatinine level might be useful in selecting those at higher risk of hypertension. So, guys, when you go through a study, don't, ru don't rush it up through the conclusion and sometimes don't even look straight to the results. Try to understand what were the methods, what was the population analyzed or the people gathered for the study and try to be critical. That's the thing that I've been told and I'm never going to stop telling you guys because all the variable, like the, it's really rare to find a study that has the same exact variable of another one already published. There's no point to, to publish some study that is exactly the same as another one, okay? So you want to underline, you want to analyze all the variables and spot any little difference and be critical and think about if any difference in uh, the study characteristics might influence the final results, okay? Ever become an unbiased, uh, unbiased uh, thought, so don't be uh, bias driven, don't try to be as neutral as possible and go through the study, underline the main, the main chunk, the main uh, finding from the study and every time try to uh, wonder and question yourself well, where the method and analyze all the uh, factors the study that you think might be crucial. So guys, hopefully you understand and you have appreciated this kind of uh, see-through, this uh, uh, reading through the study and with me underlying the main, uh, the main, uh, main bit. And if you like, just leave a comment, uh, let me know, and we can go through other studies. If you have other studies you want me to analyze, just post them in the comment section and I'll take a look at them. Have a great evening from Nico, Aesthetics, everything. See you soon, guys. Bye.